the Nikki Glazer podcast. I am. Welcome to the show. It's the Nikki Glazer Podcast. It's Monday. You know what that means. It's, it's Monday. Yeah, guess who's here, guys? It's Andrew Collin. I decided to bring him in um, for the intro because, well, we've just spent a lot of time together this morning already. I didn't want to I didn't want to say goodbye. It took a long time for us to get set up. We are live from Los Angeles. Uh, we are staying at a hotel. We are across the hall from one another. Um... It was quite a struggle to get this podcast up and running this morning. So many cords, so many hubs, so many uh, uncharged computers. And I mean, it's a whole production. Thank you so much to Noah and to Mark uh, from iHeart who uh, helped aid in the process. And to the, the maid who let me in my room after I sprinted out of my room to go help Andrew. And then the door shut behind me. It would have been added another 15 minutes to go down to the fucking lobby and get my key. And this maid, she was like, I saw you, but she could, you know, she could really get in trouble for letting me back in my room without a, you know, a check, like checking. So I said, I won't get you in trouble. And then I threw some money at her. So shout out to everyone who helped. How are you this morning, Andrew? I'm good. I'm good. I'm staring at my curry from last night, which is holding up (laughs) my uh, my curry container, which you were so nice to get Thai food last night, is holding is the background for my phone to keep it up. Yeah, and uh, <clears throat> I gotta it's tell you, tripod. It was an interesting curry. You got the me a, a kind of a veggie, a veggie, a veggie. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was veggie chicken. Did you notice that it was not real chicken? Yeah, yeah. It's good though. Isn't that stuff good? Or no, you don't like? Uh, I I liked everything else in it. Like I love a veg, just a veg. I, I that chicken just didn't do it for me. Mm. It kind of looks like little scrotums, and it's just not. So does regular chicken, but. I don't yeah, know. regular chicken looks so gross, but <laughs> little scrotums. Um, but, uh, did you just you still ate it though, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. I licked it. <laughs> and I, it's you know. the classic like eat the salad without the croutons and then eat the croutons at the end of the salad. Like you probably ate around the chicken. Yeah, you know I always eat chicken. around the scrotum. <laughs> I, always, <laughs> <laughs> I never go right in. I, I, we were I, talking I, about scrotums this weekend, right? Oh, how long mine? Yes. No, when like you, preferences. You... And you and Emil were asking about like how we feel about um, balls. Well, it came up because my balls are, the older I get, because of gravity, mm. uh, they just keep getting longer and longer. And my dick doesn't get longer. So it's pretty fucked up what God does to us. because. Well, your balls weigh more than your dick. I know. I need a weight. You know, I and that's what's to... pulling it down. So if you put weights on your dick, it would stretch it down. I it wouldn't it. make your dick actually longer. It would just be of, of you know, the way earlobes start to sag when you, when women wear like big jewelry, you know, like big earrings that yeah. are heavy, like Leslie Stahl. Maybe I just need to get a dead guy scrotum to tie to my penis to lengthen it. Yeah, like just tie balls. some scro- tie uh, scrotum with balls to tie to my. The dick. only way to really stretch anything down there is with a scrotum, <laughs> yeah. and so you would have to. <laughs> well, we were we all, like looked up guys with like the biggest penis or the longest penis, and this one guy, um, he was he would put weights on his to, yes. to stretch it out because it became like I bet it was already big, and then he was like, "Let's just this is my thing," and then he. Is it? Yeah. Do you ever like stretch it and pull on it so it can get longer? Did you My, ever do that when you were a kid? Yeah, and what guys do is you get hard and you push on the skin around it to give it another like quarter. Like your belly or half button almost. Like when you press around your belly button, the it comes out. Yeah, that's what you do with dicks, and and then what you learn when you're a kid is that there's a little bit more dick inside you. That that's what, what the doctors do when they along your cock. They'll 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 get. There's a little bit more dick in your body, in your body that can. Oh, there's like you can feel that there's a little bit more mu- like muscle in there. Like it's yeah. not a muscle, I guess. It's so weird how it. it it's an how, organ. Yeah. How strong it gets. Yeah. With just blood, that's insane. It takes so much effort for you guys to keep that thing hard. That's a, that's a lot of energy going right towards that area. It's yeah. Amazing, you guys can do anything else. Like we lift don't. us up. We can't. Mm. I mean, it, it, it is amazing. Like remedial too. math. You you wrote remedial math on a um, post this weekend, and I saw the comments. Yeah. And people were like, what is remedial math? And I didn't even know either. What is remedial math? I think it's early math. 
Okay. <laughs> like, you know, plus and minus. Maybe Are you division. good at math? I think you're good at math. You're pretty fast. I'm pretty good at math. Give me any times table. Okay. Um. I mean, I feel like everyone knows times tables, but do you want me to give you like a higher number? Like, some... yeah, just try me out. Let's see. Fourteen times twelve. Fourteen times twelve. One sixty-eight. Wow. I don't know if that's. Can right. you verify that? Okay. I just know the see. eight is eight parts right because I just did it in my head. The like two times four. Wait, you, you said 14 I mean? times 12? Yeah. yeah. 168. That's what yeah, I said. That's what he said. Whoa. Wow, no, yeah. you tried to doubt me. You were like 168. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's what I said. Um, I said 148. <laughs> How did you do that? Like, what's what's going on in your mind when you do that? Uh, so much. <laughs> no, but I really want to know. Like, no. You know, when, no. I, when I do, like, give me a simpler one. No, no, this you. is what happened. This okay. is what my mind did. I did 12 times 12, which I knew was 144. Added 24. There we go. Okay. That's, that's, you showed your work. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's showing your work, which okay, you didn't I'll do it you when one. you cheated in. I'll college. give you okay. one. Okay. okay. Um, let's see. Nine times 15. Okay. So I'm going to go 150 is nine times, uh, 15 times 10 is 150. So I'm going to subtract nine from that. I'm just going to go 141. Noah? Hold on. I mean, it's definitely that. <laughs> There's like no doubt. It's 135. Wait, what? <laughs> nine times 15? <laughs> Wait, what? You subtracted nine instead of 15, you dumb shit. I s oh, <laughs> I am a dumb shit. There's no way it's not that. Ah! <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, what I don't even understand shit. what you guys are doing with the subtraction yeah. stuff. Okay, so, so if it's... <laughs> Sorry to the people listening. Um, if it's oh. if it's nine times fifteen, if, if fifteen times you would go to which <laughs> fifteen times ten, which is the closest thing to nine, and you know what ten times anything is, is you just add a zero, so it's going to oh. be one fifty, and then you subtract one of the things that you multiplied, which I subtracted the wrong number. I yeah. subtracted nine, and I should have known because anything with a five in it is going to be a zero or a five when you multiply it. That's so true. So true. I never learned the one where it's like you hold up your hands and you go like one, two, three, and it's like twenty-seven. Oh no! The you only know, thing like, I oh, knew... it's nine times three. That's right. One, two, three, and then it's two seven. Oh uh, yeah, no, I never learned. You that. You never learned that. I drew the turkey. That was fun. I I definitely do left and right. I use this where you make L's with your hand, mm. and the one that is the wrong L. is yeah. the or the one that looks. Wait, fuck. L is. Correct. L is left. The one that's right is the left. Oh man! Oh, and then boy. right, right sucks. You shouldn't. That word should not be meaning correct and yes to turn to the make a right. Right. How do you say make a right instead of saying right? Turn. Uh, turn right. Correct. No. What's half of ninety? Turn forty-five degrees to the east. Perpendicular. Like, I mean, what do you? How do you say right? Turn perpendicular. Oh, okay. Yeah. We're really smart. <laughs> I mean, Andrew, you're actually good at math. I think. I'm decent. I'm decent. I I, I did better on math than verbal in in on my yeah, SAT. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Um, believe it or I'm not. Much better at verbal. I just went to the Starbucks that is by my. So we're staying at a hotel in the Valley, in um, like the shallow Valley. The Chalet in LA, and I used to live right down the street from where we're staying, and I used to go to the Starbucks every single day from like 2007 to 2009, and it was just like so trippy going back there, and like I was so just, it, I was in a uh, a worse place in my life, and it was funny because we checked into the hotel yesterday, and mm -hmm. I stayed at this hotel before. This is the place I stayed where I spilled nail polish all over the bathroom, all over, like a fucking crime scene. And I was crying because I was staying at this hotel because I was being flown out to audition for, you know, Kevin Smith, right? You know who that is? Yeah. He, this was 2010. How did you even get the audition? I don't, uh, some producer that he, I had worked with on something liked me. Okay. And he wanted me to audition to be one of the people that was going to be his co-host for a daily show that would be syndicated kind of like a regis and kelly type thing 
and it would be Kevin Smith and a girl, and they were auditioning a girl part for it. And I was in the running. It was me and two other girls. One of them was Christina Pazitsky. And we auditioned at John Lovett's Comedy Club and the Universal City Walk, which is at Universal Studios right right here in the Valley. And um, and they flew me out from New York, put me up. I remember it was so much money. I didn't even have a laptop at this time in my life. I was so broke. I was just starting my podcast with Sarah Schaefer. I had just moved to New York. I was living in a fucking hellhole in um, Astoria with a girl who didn't like me and we never spoke. It was that kind of awkward thing where you'd walk in every single night and like you wouldn't even talk to each other and you just kind of like passed like ghosts in the house and oh, it was so miserable. And I had a house centipede that was crawling across my pillow one night and I couldn't sleep there for months. Anyway, so then <laughs> I um I got flown out here to audition and I fucking, I, I not only did I spill nail polish all over the bathroom in here, um, and I was crying and, and trying to like, <sighs> like wash it up with nail polish remover. And it was all over this white tile in the grout. Like it could come off the tile okay, but like in the grout, it was not coming out. And I was just like, I'm, I don't have thousands of dollars. Like this is going to be. And you're hammered. You're hammered. No, I wasn't drunk. Oh. It was the morning. I was just like always hung over though. You know, like it was, this guy was picking me up that I used to sleep with back when I lived here in 2007, but now it's 2010, and we like saw each other there at a show, and he agreed to like go to lunch the next day. I could tell he didn't even want to. I remember he was texting me being like, I'm downstairs, and I'm like, I just spilled nail polish, I'm so sorry, and I'm like, I can tell he doesn't even like me. He's waiting to pick me up, he's angry he's even doing this again. Um, and I went down to the lobby and I was like crying, and I went up to the front desk and just like, I just, I spilled it all over, it's everywhere, and they were like, it's fine, we got it. I was like, but it's everywhere. They're like, we have, we can clean up anything. Like, it's it's totally cool. And I didn't get charged anything. It was amazing. But I bombed that audition so fucking hard. Why do you think you bombed the audition? And like, what was the audition? Did you sit with him? It was, yeah, it was in front of a live audience. And it was Kevin Smith's show where he just stands, sits on stage and like tells stories. And then he would have he would ask each of the girls to get up and have a conversation with him in front of an audience. So just like kind of do a podcast kind of in front of an audience. And I lost, oh no, that was part of the audition. And then the second part was actually to do his podcast. And I went to his house to do his podcast. And I had stayed up all night the night before drinking so much with my, with the guy that I liked so much, MC Mr. Napkins who was about to be my boyfriend from that night, I think was the first time we hooked up. And I woke, I, I shouldn't, I had a show early that night. I was supposed to go back to my hotel and just get a good night's sleep for this early morning. I had to wake up at like 7 a.m. to do this podcast. That was like, and I had already signed all the contracts for like what the money would be if I got this job. And it was so much money. Like it was just do you more think than you, I could ever dream of. Couple questions. Did you... Did you not care because you did so bad on the live show that you figured you didn't no, get it? No, the live show went kind of well. Okay. And then I did the show at UCB on Franklin. That's where I saw Zach. Afterwards, we went to Birds, which is the bar next door. And I just had one beer, which led to two. Which, And then all of a sudden, this guy that I liked, things were going well with this guy that I, he's finally single. He was, he was had a girlfriend when I first met him. I come back to town and now he's single. And yeah, I just got wasted. I was so <laughs> excited about... I've always prioritized like boys over work. Always. Thank God I haven't had that much like uh, excitement in that department. Like it's been pretty stable. But I've always just been like, oh, this guy that I've liked, like this is happening. Okay, I'll just put this. This is more important than everything else. You know, it's just like I, and and I showed up the next morning and I lost my voice. I was literally on the podcast like this. No lost my voice because I used to lose my voice every time I drank because I would just be screaming and it would be so dry. It was just, ugh. So what did you do? Did you try to play it off or did you apologize or like? I said, it, you know, like I'm sick or something, you know, like yeah. you just lie when you were hung over. You are sick. So I guess that's not a lie. But, you know, that's the part I hated about drinking so much is that you're sick, but no one feels sorry for you. You've done it to yourself. You can't get that sick. I'm I've got a cold sympathy. Mm -hmm. Or I've got the flu sympathy. Like, no, when you are hungover, people are just like, oh, fuck you. You know, it's, and it's just you on your own. And I, 
I really crave a lot of nurturing when I'm sick. And I think that that was, that was kind of the, the, I, and by the way, I celebrated my 10 year, um, of not drinking anniversary on, uh, Saturday, I believe. Yes. I think it was 10th. Friday night, wasn't it? Or maybe That's it was so Friday. That's so weird. Like our days. Yeah, yeah it was Friday. Um, cause I went to the Taylor Swift mm-hmm. sing along and that our, was on Friday. Our days are almost identical. It's kind of weird. Really? What what day is yours? I mean, it's right, like, literally, I don't know the exact day. I could look it up. It was mm-hmm. the day after I did a Girls Gotta Eat live show in New York. Right. And that was the last time I had a, a drink. So three years for me. But yeah, dude, that's awesome. Ten yeah, years. Yeah, ten is, years. Yeah, that's... Yeah, it's, uh, you know, if you times it by 15 and then you <laughs> subtract 15, it's it's like one, 141. Or something like yeah, that. 141. Yeah, it's 141. <laughs> 140, actually. <laughs> um... Yeah, ten. And, and How I'm did you reluctant feel, to ever so say after you bombed this oh, this thing, the that worst you, to make so because much money. I, what I did you do? I squandered this did opportunity. You? you know, like this happens to me all the time. Though, like I want to be clear, like my life has not changed in terms of shirking responsibility in favor of doing something that is fleeting and feels good in the moment. Mm-hmm. And whether that was getting high, drinking. Uh, hooking up something that like gives me a rush and something that I'm like honestly so scared about so nervous about um you know I have I have to edit my special I must edit my I'm going in I'm getting picked up in one hour to go into an edit bay and look at my special that I taped two weeks ago and I am filled with dread and anxiety over it because Mm -hmm. It's not gonna live up to what I want for myself. It just can't because I don't, there's no living up to what I, there's there's just no, there's, I'm, I can't be perfect. And I woke up this morning to look at it, just to like see it. And I watched a little bit of it with you yesterday at the airport and I felt really good because it was funny. And then I watched, I woke up this morning and I was doing the thing that I read in um, that book that Ari recommended that I only read literally one chapter of. And then I was like, oh, my God. And it helped me edit my last special because oh, it was yeah. that was the thing I put off more than anything. I also have a book proposal due like on Wednesday for my book that I'm supposed to be selling in the new year. And I can't do e- any of these things. I keep playing guitar. I keep um, just texting friends, uh, r- like listening to music. Like I just find uh, masturbating. I find anything else to do besides these things. But what I did this morning, because it literally is the last second, like I have to look at it today. And I was supposed to send notes before I went to the edit. So I was going to work on notes this morning. Set my alarm for six. Had to be somewhere at eight. So I was like, I'll have two hours to watch this 75 minute cut. I got 10 minutes in. And I go, fuck this. I cannot do this. I want to just sit with someone in an edit bay and go, no, can we see the other cut? But like, I just think that I work better in the moment when it's the last minute and it's Mm -hmm. not the last minute yet. Um, But I did use the tools that Ari Finling had suggested I read this book called The Tools. And it is about, um, (laughs) it is about the Brendan Schaub podcast. No, it is about, (laughs) I was just picking people. Does he have a podcast? Brendan Schaub? I think yeah. like 19 of them. <laughs> yeah. Which one? <laughs> He's always so nice to me. I don't know why I picked him as a tool. He's really always, he he never says I'm like, I think he said they say I'm funny, but he always says I'm hot and it makes me feel good. Whenever my name comes up in a podcast, he'll just be like, she's so hot. And like, I don't know why it makes me feel fucking great. I mean, I do know why I'm shallow. But um, <laughs> so I the, the tools say you're supposed to, when you are scared of something, And I just want to share this with everyone because this really did help me this morning. Even though I didn't get through it, per se, it did help me just look at it. And we got to go to break. And um, what it is, is you say, I love fear. Fear sets me free. Bring it on. I love fear. Fear sets me free. Bring it on. And I'll elaborate a little bit more when we come back from this quick break. Andrew! Andrew. No, I just leave. What's up? Andrew. Nick. Do you remember this tool? This, this, I love fear. Fear sets me free. Bring it on. Do you remember that mantra? I do. I do. From this book that Ari told us to read. We both read the same chapter. Um, Yeah. I can't imagine if we read two chapters in a book. I mean, we'd probably know division, long division. Oh, Um, my God. (laughs) No, I think, um, 
What I remember <laughs> is is you speak out your fear. So whatever you, you're most afraid of, let's say your special sucks, everyone hates it. Yes. And then, like, what's the worst that can happen from that? And then you speak it out to existence – and so then you kind of mitigate it by saying it out loud. And the closer you get to fear, see, this is what I reread this chapter because I needed just to brush up on it. So if this thing you're dreading or this thing, a call you're about to make to your sister who you haven't talked to in a while, or you're about to clean out this garage that has just been piling up, this thing, the further away you push it, the more scary it is. Yep. So imagine something, you know, the closer you get to it, the smaller it shrinks down in terms of taking over your mental space and, and being something that you are scared to confront. Like once you, it's almost like a monster that in the distance looks super scary, but when you get up close, it's the size of a chipmunk. So the closer you get to the thing, it diminishes. And that's just true when you actually learn to confront these things. So what you do is you actually visualize, you visualize the thing that you're fearing doing. For me, it was editing my special. And I was just like, you know what? You, you try to convince yourself that you love fear. Because on the, and not in a masochistic way of like, I love pain. I love like the, I love actually being scared and nervous, but I love the, the, the motion of fear tells me that I am about to conquer something. If I get closer to it, I love fear because fear is actually this illusion. It's, it tells you to stay away and it makes you think that you should be scared. But the sense of fear is actually you about to overcome something that is going to make you feel so good on the other side of it because it will be over. It will have a, an ending to it once it's done. And it's something that you, you know you got to do. So what you do is you say, I love fear. You just keep saying this over to yourself. I love fear. Fear sets me free. Bring it on. And you imagine yourself just walking into this like cloud of the fear and just facing it dead on and really convince yourself, even if you don't, that you love it that you love fear because you know on the other side of it that it's gonna be great. So when you start to change your relationship to fear, instead of being scared of fear, just re restructuring how you feel about it and be like, I actually love it. And if you say things enough, I'm not even kidding you, I never thought positive affirmations worked or like these mantras, but dude, they work. I was just reading about lucid dreaming, which I'm getting into because I started following the subreddit about lucid dreaming just to as I'm, you know, about to fall asleep at night, pick up little tips. It's a very convoluted c concept, and there's a lot of um, things about it that I don't really quite understand. And you got to keep a dream journal, and you got to do reality checks during your day, so that you start doing reality checks in your dream. So during the day, every hour, you're supposed to set an alarm on your phone to do a reality check. If you've seen Inception, it's the one where you put your finger through your hand, mm. and when you do this in a dream, it, your finger will go through your hand. But in reality, so if you do this all day, and I was just reading last night that this guy was like, for everyone who's feeling frustrated that you're trying to lucid dream and you're doing these reality checks 20, out, 20 times a day, maybe more, and you think th it's not paying off, I'm not doing them in my dream. He was like, last night, it finally, after fucking months of doing reality checks, it finally happened where I was, you know, he was like making pancakes with fucking, you know, Ant-Man and over a grill and he just was like, I'm gonna do a reality check and he did it and then he was like, and then all of a sudden he was able to be like, oh my God, I'm dreaming. I can do anything I want in this dream and then he could move about it. Mm. So it's these things that you just, it's trusting, I guess, that you don't have it all figured out and that even though, cause positive affirmation seemed like the biggest bunch of hogwash to me of saying something over and over and then it actually ha happening. I would love for besties, if you have any experience with that, of like saying something over and over and then it really changing the way you look at something or the way that you live your life. I would love to hear stories of that because my most, I mean, I have a couple famous The, th the ones, thing but, that yeah. changed me, the most simplest thing that has changed my life probably the most was one, like two sentences. And it's instead of saying I have to do something, you change it to I, I get. get to do something. And it just, I mean, I remember like, you know, you come up in New York and you do stand up and you you got to do a show in like the Lower East Side in a bar for five people that aren't listening and the TV might still be on. And you got to be like, I have to fucking do this. I have. And you go, oh, I get to perform. I get to practice. I get to do this. And it just changes how you it's such a simple phrase that yes. really changed how I look at so much shit, especially stand up like and it I don't know. It really helped me a lot. So it's like. 
if you like, you know, you're alive. If you're dreading something or you're nervous about something, you just change it to from I even have if it's like to, calling the insurance company. How do you how do you frame that? Like, I have to call my insurance company. I get to like okay. I have enough money to afford insurance. That's cool. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Or uh, how about this? You're just fucking alive to be able to make the phone call, and you're healthy, yeah. so you get I to do it. Dude, like, the other day when I did my um, Instagram live and I was playing music, I was just so grateful in that moment because I had all these besties watching and being so supportive. Noah was there. And I was just like, I, I was honest. I just was like, I'm so grateful for my hands. I'm so gr-. Like, if you have hands, maybe out there you don't have hands or you have arthritis. Even if you have arthritis in your hands, like, you still have hands. Like, it's... It's so simple. The gratitude lists are those kinds of things that really help you. Noah, is there anything that's coming to mind for you that uh, is something that you thought wouldn't have worked in terms of this kind of foo-foo, uh, positive yeah. affirmation, changing the way you look at things kind of thing? I used to be the biggest pessimist, and I was like, oh, this is such BS. But I just think it's um, like the laws now of physics. Now you changed it to the best shit. BS stands for best best shit <laughs> like, exactly shit. and i just yeah. found like through experience that positive energy attracts more positive energy yep i've also learned to eliminate should the word should like for me i just keep saying should is a dirty word how can i make this phrase or statement it without is, using the like word should so what do you turn it's not even a good good word what should you- is i the one thing i like about should let me just say is that I never forgot this, and I think I've shared it before. When your shoulders are like, oh, mm. oh my God. Like when when you have like a tension in your shoulders, that's all the shoulds, they're shoulders. Cause they're all the shoulds of like, <laughs> I should be doing this and I yes. should do that and I need to do that. Like it sh- when you are when you feel a pain in your shoulder, that's your, that's, that's a sign to go to drop the shoulds. Because honestly, it's enough that you're alive, There, you know, I should be doing Pilates. I should be, my lawn should look like that woman's. My hair should, I should get my hair done. I like, if you, I need to say this to myself. You're doing your fucking best, Nikki. You're doing your best. And yesterday you had all day, you had 12 hours of travel, Andrew and I had yesterday. And was my plan to tackle my special? you damn right it was. Was it to, you know, work on my book proposal? Yes. Did I tell people that those were things I was going to do? Yes. Was there ever a second I wanted to do them? No. Did I think about it constantly that I wasn't doing it? And did I kind of suffer all day? Yes. But you know what? There was no other way for yesterday to happen. There was no fucking other way. I was never going to do that yesterday. It was not in the plan. And the thing is, it's not that I could have done those things because I literally couldn't. Yes, I had my laptop. Yes, I had Wi-Fi. Yes, I had the time. Yes. But could I do, do it? No, because I wanted to listen to fucking say goodbye, Dave Matthews, Tim Reynolds, live at Luther College, a hundred times uh, over and over so that I can, f- you know, mentally figure out the strumming and strum like quietly in my seat like a lunatic on my flight. Here's the thing. And That's what I wanted to do. That's all I could do. Couple questions. One for Noah. When you, instead of should, when you eliminate it, do you just do the thing that you think that you should have done? Like, do you just. Is yeah, that, what's a should that you're, you're, is like, in your head this week? Like, what's the example of, like, what do you do when you go, oh, I should have gone to jujitsu? Do you just go? Like, is that like... Or the, do you think of it like a dirty word? Like, don't say that. Yeah, I just say, okay, well, how do I feel today about going to jujitsu? And then I, I weigh out the pros and cons of going. Oh, and so, okay. All right, yeah, gotcha. so I just don't, like, sh- just having that mind frame of, uh, I should do that, or they should do this or that. It just, I think it kind of um, gives me like a sort of arrogance that I don't want to have. Like, I know what's best for everyone or yes, what's or best. or best for you. Yeah. Thank you for hitting on mm-hmm. that. Like, I feel like so often, and I know I'm not alone here, I have it all figured out. I know what would make me the best I could be. I know. I know the right workouts. I know the right diet. I know the right, like the right clothes to wear I know all of that but actually I think that the choices I make might be what is the I I actually I have to surrender and go I don't know I I am not I you know I believe in like I say God but for me that is really the universe and that that even sounds worse to some people in a lot of ways like the universe wanted me to have this but Mm. I truly like 
I'm having a dilemma in my life right now. And I, I keep going like, I have to make a decision about this. This needs to be decided. I, I need to look into the future because I know what's going to happen with this if I choose this lane. And I know what's going to happen if I choose this lane. And, uh, you know, everyone has this in their life, whether it's small or big, these different lanes you can take. And yesterday I was just, I had a friend remind me and I was reading through um, this uh, this amazing uh, app that I really recommend you buying. It's probably four ninety nine, but it's an Al Anon type literature thing. Which is uh, Al Anon is if you are an adult child of an alcoholic or you have any alcoholic family members. There's this group you can go to called Al Anon, and there's but this you don't need to qualify for this. These are just good daily. It's a daily reader, and you it's an app, and you just open it up, and whatever day it's on, you have a lesson in there, and. The other day it was like, I just, I looked for the one that I needed because what I needed to hear was, you don't have it all figured out. You don't even know what's best for you. You really need to trust that it is not up to you. You didn't choose your brain. You didn't choose how your heart is. You didn't choose the color of your skin. You didn't choose your parents. Someone did. Maybe it's fucking just nature. Maybe it was, you know, just randomness. Even if you don't believe in God and you're a total atheist and it's just random, you know, like I was just a fucking sperm that hit an egg and then all genetics happened. That still wasn't up to you. And it's still not up to you. None of it is. Your brain is making thoughts that you think you're in control of, but you really don't because your brain was not developed by you. It's the thoughts you have were not chosen by you. Um, And that gets into no free will. But like, I just have to go. I said yesterday about this decision that I felt was so fraught that I need to make. And even if you have a decision that has a deadline, let's say, this one doesn't for me, it's just like a life thing. But one that is like a, a decision needs to be made tomorrow. Let's say you need to decide if you're gonna take this job offer or you know quit your job. Truly, just try it. I know it sounds insane. The worst that can happen is nothing happens. But just go universe or God or whatever you believe in, fucking random uh, spaghetti monster in the sky, help me, guide me to what I need to do. Let me just like relax and go on this ride and you tell me what I need to do. And somehow, somewhere, you will know what's right to do. Because whatever you do is the right way. Whatever you choose, even if it's the biggest regret you've ever made, it was always gonna go that way. So just let it happen. Mm. And just, it just, I just, I that was a tool that I got from my eating disorder, recovery that has helped me in so many things in life that I have to remember it is I keep thinking I'm in control of everything what I I wear what I eat and sometimes even what I wear I go this is a thing in recovery a lot when you're looking at socks you go god what socks should I wear today and somehow something pops in your head of like these are the ones and you just know it's weird if if you just surrender like you have control the the answer will present itself a lot of times I, I think also like, you know, the 12 hours, you know, you go, I, it's funny when you say like, I had 12 hours yesterday to do the special, you know? Yeah, I did. But if you really like, think about it, one, it was the night before we finished, you know, 38 cities of doing a tour, right? Mm-hmm. You did three hours of stand up this past weekend. We traveled over 10 hours, over two different states, before all this 12 hours, right? Then you're I checked on an- into a hotel that smelled like cigarette smoke. I had to check, I had to pe- repack and pack and leave it. I was yeah. crying before a show because I was so depressed. So I, like, so I went through a lot this weekend. So and, 12 hours. But it doesn't matter, Andrew. There's I something know, about me but- that when the alarm goes off in the morning, it's a new day. It doesn't matter what you did this weekend. You got to work today. And I got to let myself off the fucking hook for it. And you're right. So that's what I'm saying. Like all the all these things accumulate to the to twelve hours is an I yeah, I watched Succession twelve times. And uh (laughs) I think I finally understood it. You know, it took no, I didn't watch it twelve times, but the finale was fucking awesome. I mean, I saw Andrew he was watching it and he goes, What the fuck? It was like he was watching it was crazy. A slow play, like shows nowadays. You know, they so they fast. all come out, all 10 at the same time. You watch maybe seven in a row. You you know, you're just like, whatever. It's kind of background. Succession is this slow moving one a week. It builds and it builds 
and fucking the finale was last night, and it just all accumulated to so much drama and hilarity and just fucking backstabbing. And it was, oh, it was, oh, so rich. Like, I, I really, like, God, I wish I could share it with you. But I really I know, want you I gotta to watch, watch it. it. I but, want to watch it. I want you to watch the morning show. If anyone out there has watched season two of the morning show, what the fuck? I can't even believe <laughs> that what happened happened on the morning show. And I'm talking about episode seven or eight. You know what happened. <laughs> and I was truly profoundly affected by it. I'm not okay. I'm still not okay. And it, I watched it five days ago. And to me, everyone watched. I mean, the morning show season two came out a while ago like months ago people i can't believe i didn't see like people just in the streets screaming about it like sometimes you watch a show i mean i bet you feel the same way about succession of like why well, isn't the maid are. talking to me about this today people are like if you go on yeah. i mean it's the, the, oh my God, the, I, the finality lived up because it's all about gr- fucking greed of their these fucking children who are so underappreciative of their father but the father is a piece of shit <laughs> like yeah and, and then this the guy that you don't expect to fucking ah! Okay, no spoilers. That's spoilers. it. And you know what? Fucking someone spoiled Sex in the City for me right away. Remy Casimir. You know what? She on her on her Instagram, she instantly spoils a big plot point of Sex in the City that I think happens fairly early in it. I watched the first episode of Sex in the City, the new one, and, and it's called um and just like that. Because that's what a th- that you know, Sarah Jessica Burke says a lot. It is filled with k. You guys, I mean, that show was already k as fuck because Samantha would always be like, I'll take white sauce on my pasta and on my face. You know, it's always like a k yeah. line. But man, there are so many k things. Like, I should I was be, deeply uncomfortable for a lot of that show. And, should be called um, like menopause in the suburbs at this point. They look great and they're cute, but just <laughs> Carrie is on a podcast oh. and it's a, it's like a podcast with a, a cis male played by Bobby Lee, a cis female played by Sarah Jessica Parker and like someone who represents like a queer non-binary woman who and they're both comics, Bobby and the woman. They're not play. I forget the woman's um, name. I feel like I've met her before. She's they're both great, but it's just like watching a podcast on TV is weird. And they're asking Carrie about masturbating. They're like, oh, have you ever masturbated? Where, you- where would you masturbate in public? Because they're talking about public transit, people masturbating. And Carrie's like, uh, uh, um, <laughs> I, I mean, I just, I, I don't think I want to talk about that. And it's like, this is, this is not Carrie Bradshaw that we know, but maybe they're trying to prove that she's changed and uh, she's going to find herself now and she's going to become brash again. It's kind of a cool message that like, it's okay to be, to be, to not have secrets anymore, to not have these taboos that you won't talk about. So maybe um, maybe it'll get better. I'm going to stay with it. But um, do we have time for the news or do we just blow past it? Oh, yeah. Let's get to the news. You heard it here first. You heard it here first. Yeah, you heard it here first. Oh, boy. It's Monday, folks. You know what that means? It is Monday. We've already talked about that. But, hey, I hope you're having all the swells. All of them. Even you, uh, Steve. We've covered Dave, Steve, and what was the last name you did? Potent- They're very generic names. Potentially Jeff, but I'd have to go over mm, my notes. Mm, yeah. I have all the names written down. In a, I'm sure you do. Yeah. They're, um, 141. They're labeled under uh, random names that, uh, that are boring as fuck. Okay. A woman who makes a fortune on OnlyFans for her unique look says that people call her a demon after getting her eyeballs tattooed. That seems like a logical response from people. <laughs> she shouldn't be surprised. Okay, so she got her eyes tattooed. There's black in them. That literally looks exactly like my eyes looked like this weekend when I got liquid <laughs> eyeliner in my waterline. And it just made my whole eye black. What? That's what it looks like. When was that? Yeah, like liquid eyeliner. I do it in the waterline. It changes everything. But you're supposed to, because I didn't have a, um, a pencil to use. A pencil for eyeliner, you know, doesn't like bleed. It just is more like a pencil. But this was like a marker and the marker just bled into my eye because my eyes wet and then it made my eye black and I had to put in a Q-tip and clean out my eye. That girl, I um, guess she's going to grow old with that. You know. With all those she face said, tattoos. I mean, here's she says the thing. that she's never felt more comfortable in her own skin. I, Great. I saw, Great. I saw a good quote 
from Travis Barker because someone said something similar. You're like, oh, you're going to be 65 with all that. He goes, yeah, I'm going to be 65 with – there's going to be th- thousands of other 65-year-olds with tattoos. Yeah. And Was there a thing back – in the day where they were like, you're going to be 65 with that, like that, you know, permanent decisions that people were making back in like the 40s and 50s, 60s, 70s, you know, that are older now. We're just starting to see tattoos age. Yeah. Like real, like a lot of tattoos. Yes. Yes. We're just seeing those people reaching into the, the ages where it's like gravity. I mean, back then it was long, it was long skin, hair. Like scrotum. Guys skin. having long mm-hmm. hair was ta- the tattoos. Mm. Or, but that's not a. Um, it's not permanent. No, I know. Yeah. Um even though, but that it doesn't age well because guys who make their thing long hair when they start losing <laughs> yeah, their hair, yeah, yeah. oh, there is nothing worse than a little wispy ponytail. Like <laughs> when it's this much hair in a ponytail, I want to, I want to scream. Oh, it's the best because the ponytail just keeps. You start it like here, and then it just keeps going farther, farther back. Yeah. Oh, it's so yeah. hot. Um, I mean, your mom got permanent um, makeup, right? She got, she got like tattoo eyeliner. Yeah. And I bet that still looks good. Eyeliner is one thing that um, on a on a lady never really I don't think goes out of style. Um, I think uh, yeah, I think she just got so tired of fucking the tediousness of it. She was fucking like whatever, and and Jews aren't supposed to get tattoos, is what we were told our whole life. And I yeah. used to work for a permanent makeup artist, and mm-hmm. um, we had a lot of Orthodox women who would come and do per- permanent makeup because you can't do your makeup on like Shabbos or whatever and eyebrows and all of that. And um, the rabbis approved it because it was like a certain amount of layers of skin from what I remember. Oh. Whatever. It's all nonsense. No, no, but my mom said that like she could get tattoos because it was, uh, what's the word? It starts with cosmetic or it starts with an A. um, Aesthetic. Aesthetic. And I go, I go, yeah, that's what that's what every tattoo is. Every tattoo is aesthetic. Yeah. Like that's some bullshit right. excuse. And um, yeah, you know, a lot of people with alopecia do permanent makeup too. Right for to make eyebrows and mm-hmm. and and you know women who've had their nipples removed from uh, you know mastectom mastectom mastectomies. I had a couple letters removed from that word just now. <laughs> yeah, my mom um, goes, you know, you can't be buried in a Jewish cemetery, and it's like I've. Okay, like I don't really know what the the fear of like, oh, how do I want to be? What do you want to do with your body after it's over? Whatever you want. Put me behind, I, I honestly, put me I might de- dedicate Denny's. my body to guys who would like to fuck dead people because I'm dead. I don't. I mean, I, I literally, if that was a thing that you could do, donate your body to necrophiliacs. Go. I, I I just don't. I know that's like it's a disgusting thing to say. It's your favorite position anyways. You do it when you're alive. You play the dead <laughs> yes, woman. Yes. I mean, <laughs> I love coffin style. <laughs> just sitting with like chalky makeup on. <laughs> Wait, should I do an open casket if I die? Like open caskets, how do you feel about them? I, I kind of like them. I like to see the person one last time, I'm, even though it's just never what they look like. They Everyone always looks like Abraham Lincoln. I'm going to do an open casket, but it'll just be a little door for my penis. So everyone could come and just be like, oh, fine. Yes. I want your. I want to see that asshole. Of yours. <laughs> oh boy, people. I want a coroner's report on that thing. <laughs> they're gonna be like, you're. No matter what you die of, they're gonna be like, it was this. Oh yeah. What he had a gunshot wound back. Yeah, there. I could get stabbed in the neck, and people would be like, it was his asshole. <laughs> <laughs> it was his asshole. No, he died. He bled out in like two minutes. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, we've got a canyon back here. <laughs> um. My my it's, asshole is the black hole of like like it could just suck things in at any moment. You know, like when people like tap a spoon on a dessert and then it like cracks open. Yeah, a creme brulee maybe. Yeah, is that what your asshole looks like? That that hole that a, a spoon cracking on. Yeah, a, a creme brulee. Pronounced. But you don't know what it looks like. You because how does Stevie Wonder play the piano? Look. I'm, That's how you're able to like sense what it is. Look, it's the same way freaking Beethoven could still hear music. I, I but assholes look bad anyway. Like, I mean, they look f- fine, I guess, but they're not like this beautiful. You know, it's the same way I feel about vaginas. Like. Aesthetically, vaginas aren't just like they look like flowers, I guess. So you could be like, "Oh, that's beautiful," but that's a good point. You know, you're, that's a good point because the asshole. No one starts, expects your asshole to be that 
That's of anything to be really hideous on you, an asshole is the best thing to be. That's I have it. a question about Andrew's asshole. Go ahead, Noah. Yeah, please, please do. I was wondering, so you won't look at it with a mirror, but have you ever touched it to kind of get like the landscape? Yeah, that's the Stevie Wonder aspect. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, He's okay. Helen Keller in it. Yeah, so um, I could draw it. Because he rubs he rubs uh stuff on it. Oh, okay. Got it. So is it like a star shape? Like is it <laughs> um, is it have like edges? No, there's like um there's like a uh uh, what's it called? Like a like a tonsil thing, that like Adam's apple. Like the the hemorrhoid, if you. Uh, oh, the little tab on the outside of but it. But it's pretty long at this point. I could probably get it removed. I um. Wait, does it? Does your, like when you poop, does that little tab lift? Like, does it and and scrape along? Like, a, is it like coming out of a doggy door? Like, does it have a? Does your asshole have a flap over it? Uh, like a yeah you know, yeah I have a flap hole. For a sure. mud flap. Yeah, I do have a mud flap. I, but it, I'm serious. Does it yeah. does it overhang your asshole, I could or is tuck, it beneath I could it? Tuck so that it into my butthole. <laughs> have you done that before? Maybe. Maybe. Yes, that's a yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next news story. What if that is breaking news? Andrew Collin admits yeah. tucking his hemorrhoid yeah. into his asshole. My asshole has a drawbridge. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm picturing, dude. <laughs> the That's prince the is here, and it's just a piece of shit going. I may cross, <laughs> and then my asshole just opens up, and it goes. You may cross. God, why do I want to see it so bad? I know. I think the more I That's tell the Brenna reason... about it, the more she wants. Yeah, to... Brenna's obsessed with it too. Oh, she wants yeah. to get in there just because it's just like, yeah, just curiosity killed my asshole. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it it is um you know it's something it'll definitely kill me. I mean, I joke about it, but like I do have to get a colonoscopy again soon. Like I had polyps that were cancerous. Like it will probably be the thing that kills me. Like no. Would you rather me stabbed in the neck? <laughs> Yeah, I want you to get stabbed in the neck. <laughs> That's so sad. Like my great grandma. What do you done? want at your funeral, though? What do I want? Some dips. Yeah, like do you want it to be a you want you want a little door for your dick so we can all see that in your casket and open. Yeah, and if it's if you guys are worried about it being open, we could just do a little like glass, little visual kind of thing, like you know, like a sky glass for my dick. Okay. And I want my dick to be fluffed a little bit because. The last thing I want is for people to go, wow. Let's taxidermy it. Yeah. And let's stuff it. Yeah. So before I die, just make sure I'm hard somewhat. Not fully, right. though, All because right. that'd be embarrassing, too. So I want to be half hard when yeah. I die. And <laughs> <laughs> I want people to go, was he a shower or a grower or neither? Would you like to die having sex? You know, a lot of men die of heart attacks while they're, like, having sex. Would that be... Would that feel good to you to have that be your story? I think it'd be hilarious to die jerking off. I just don't know if I'd want to do that to the other person. Like, they'd never be able to have sex again. If right. you, f- oh, yeah. Oh, you want them to go on and have more partners after you? Yeah, I would like that. I mean, I would like That's them sweet to of you. come okay. at least once before they die. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next story. <laughs> um, let's see here. Um, Sorry, I'm reading off the computer because my phone is... All right, a C- Do you want me to share screen? I got you. A CNN producer is charged with attempting to entice minors for sex. He was able to convince the mothers of young daughters to allow the girls convince. to be sexually submissive to him. Oh, God. Who is this guy? John Griffin conveyed thoughts, including one, that a woman is a woman regardless of age and that women should be sexually subservient and inferior to men. On occasion, he gave $3,000 plane tickets to a mom and a nine-year-old to fly to his home in Boston, where he engaged a daughter in unlawful sexual activity. Awful. Oh, that is how, oh, I don't he even know He's also Chris Cuomo's producer, was. from what I understand. It was who? Chris Cuomo's producer. Hmm. Oh, my God. Oh, this guy's a producer. Okay. Jesus Christ. Oh, man, come on. If you're into this shit, I know you don't choose it, but you got to, like, you got to make sure you protect people from yourself. Don't indulge in these things. Go get help. Jesus Christ. These Everyone's poor kids. Everyone's going after CNN. Like, 
Like, oh, now look who's the predator. And, like, that's where we've gotten to is, like, who's the bigger predator? Where they get excited. Yeah, they get excited. Where yeah. Fox News gets, the right gets excited because we have a pedophile in, in the And the left know, gets excited when people die that aren't vaxxed. Like, we're pretty fucked up people. Like, we are fucking yeah. fucked up. And this guy's obviously oh, fucked up. God. The mom's I wonder how this up. guy got caught. Um... Oh, because he was using a uh, kick and Google Hangouts to solicit Jesus. these people, and I guess somehow the FBI got um, a tip or something. Oh God, these guys are so dumb. Thank God, horny men get dumb. Are yeah. stupid. I mean, thank God it's how so many of them get caught because they just can't help themselves. But it's just it's so tragic. And that poor child who has to deal with the fact that their parents, you know, sometimes when you're molested, like it, your parents, it was like negligence possibly on your parents' part, but they didn't facilitate it a lot of times. And at least you can have peace of mind knowing that maybe they didn't protect you in the way they needed to. But, um, and a lot of times they do everything they can and it still happens. I don't know. Part of me. These guys are really wily as fuck and they'll get you if they want to. So it wasn't your fault no matter what happened to you. It was not your fault. But, to have your mom fucking... Ugh, well, here's the thing, though. He paid $3,000 in plane tickets. Maybe the mom was just sick of flying like spirit and was like, oh, my God, I can fly first class on American. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that's like... I'll, I'll give up my yeah. kid to have that seat. You know what I mean? Like, that's how bad... Can you imagine sitting next to... Like, we could have been sitting next to these people. Yeah. Well, no. Like, you would watch a mom with her daughter, and you just have no idea. Oh, yeah. You have no There's idea what was going time. on. Like, if you see... It'd be weird, though, to Those say signs something. signs have been up. They're up yeah. everywhere now. I mean, I, I love it because, obviously, it's... They're tackling human trafficking and trying to get these girls out, and, and boys, too, but... <sighs> I mean, I really don't think that. Do you see those signs as off, like in the stalls in men's yeah, stalls? Yeah, they're, they're in is, the airport too, on the wall in. Uh, okay, Richmond. yeah. Well, Where are women these signs? for sure. Where you know the signs? ones that are say like, if you're in distress or if you are being held against your will, yeah, or if you see something, there's yeah. help. Text this number. It's like, well, they don't have a phone or tell a flight attendant. That's in the bathroom on planes is tell a flight attendant, and there's, you know. But these people, these kids know no know nothing else. They and they think they're gonna be, you know, what? Who's easier to trick than a child? You know, these these guys are a going after man. the most. <laughs> no, honestly, not. <laughs> they're going after the the most vulnerable prey. Yeah, they're fucking disgusting. You, you can get a kid to believe fucking anything, and and they just you know instill this fear in them that they're gonna their parents will be taken away. They're gonna get they'll die. All you know. Kid can be tricked into so many things. It's just we have to protect them, and you got to look out for suspicious activity. And the interesting thing rely is rely like, on your gut, even if you end up embarrassing yourself because you're worried about something else. Like I got to start looking at things a little differently too, because it is human trafficking is happening all the fucking time, and you just see a young girl with a guy, and you think, oh, that's just Andrew and his girlfriend. <laughs> but it's it's it could be a relationship, a consensual relationship, but it could maybe be something else. Or that's a guy with his kids. Look, her mom, I paid her seven thousand dollars, okay? <laughs> no, but here's the thing, like with the CNN thing, I love when people go, Well, you know, if you act it's kind of the approach of like if you act better than or if you act or if you say you're great, really you're a piece of shit. You know, they they love that. Like, like people love when people, like, fuck up that act better than the other person. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they fucking love that. Well, usually that is what happens because these people know, know. they're monsters and they have to, or they're sociopathic and they actually do think they're better and they walk around with a false sense of superiority. But, um, yeah, I mean, but, but who doesn't like to see that more I than know. anything? All I want to see is people who think they're the shit I know. fall. I that's know, like, it's great. That's that's the most <laughs> soothing <laughs> balm to my insecure soul there I can imagine, is uh, watching people fail miserably. I love there's it. There's nothing better than someone with an insane amount of confidence eating dick. It's the best. Uh, oh, I love it. And speaking of uh, that. One th last story before we go to break. This thief, a thief was a little, I think, too cocky because he got crushed. He got crushed to death by a Prius <laughs> while trying, trying to steal, to steal the, the catalytic converter. Catalytic converter. <laughs> so he propped it up and then the thing fell on him. 
Yeah, the findings on the scene indicated that at some point during the cutting of the exhaust oh. pipe, the vehicle fell off the automotive jack and on top of the male subject. You would think a Prius jack. wouldn't be heavy enough, but I guess it was. <laughs> yeah, it would be like a styrofoam that you could just like kick off yourself like a beach ball. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he died from just being embarrassed. It wasn't the weight. Oh, my God. Um, yeah. Well. I mean. That's sad. It's, it's sad, you know, like I know he was a criminal and he was doing nefarious shit, but no one wants to be stealing catalytic converters to make a living. It's, you know, no one would, no one would, that's not, no one wants to be, a. I mean, maybe some people do love being a criminal, but that poor guy, like that wasn't the end. That's not what he was wanting to do. I feel, I feel sad for him. Um, I'm sure it was like a, that's like a fucking mouse trap, though, you know? I mean, it's uh I think he probably thought even if it fell, he'd be fine. But, you know, shout out to him and everything. <laughs> yeah, and his family. And, uh, shout out. And the guy whose Prius has to be washed now. Oh, man, being crushed to death would fucking suck. <laughs> Dude, I can't even. I know. That's got to be up there in worse ways to die. Drowning is a, is a top that's a top one. But being just slowly crushed to death by something heavy when you feel it and then it just keeps on going. And it's it's got to be slow. But I mean, getting you just crushed get to death by a Prius out. is like drowning in like a baby pool. Like it's just <laughs> pathetic, you know? <laughs> that isn't the car that you want to you wanna get crushed yeah. by. A Honda, you know, a, a Honda Leaf or a <laughs> Nissan Leaf. <laughs> At least it wasn't that. Man crushed by Vespa. It's just like, ugh. Yeah, you want it to be a semi truck. Yeah. You know, you want to get smashed by a, a Mack yes. truck. That's what you want. Yeah. Or a sprinter van. Like, you want to be, <laughs> it's got to be something big, but not a, you know, a, a what are those cubes with the, the hamsters that dance? Oh, my God. Oh, the Scion. Scion. Yeah. Ugh. That would suck. I'd just rather them not say the make of the, the or model of the car if something happens to me. In yeah, just say it at four wheels. Don't. Man, it would suck to die in a goddamn Uber. You know, that would be the fucking worst. Being in an Uber and being like, oh, I didn't need to even. I could have gone with a different car if that guy would have been running. Like, there's so many what ifs. Oh, I got in oh, a if wreck I in a just... cab in New Ugh. York. You did? The cab driver got in a wreck and I just. Got out. I was like, I'm not dealing with this shit. I got in another Oh, I've gotten path. pulled over before and just gotten out and been like to the cop, like, I'm not part of this. I'm going to just go. <laughs> but that's like, when right, I was you. drinking. I was like, it's not a big deal. I'll just leave the scene. <laughs> I just left. I got in another cab. Yeah. Ugh. When you're drinking, all you do is care about yourself. It's Ugh. just the weirdest place. To be. Even when you're sober. That's I just like did it. I wasn't <laughs> yeah, making good yeah. decisions. <laughs> but last night when we were checking in the hotel and I was like, man, the last time I was here, I was drinking so much. And I was like, I don't know, like. And Andrew's like, God, I we I wish I would have known you back then. And I'm like, you kind of do. I feel like I'm the same. I don't really remember being that much different. I was like, I might have been a little bit happier. <laughs> <laughs> I was dying. But now I don't have, um, you know, I don't have immense guilt all no. the time. And that 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 equals uh, something. That equals the very last episode. Let's of take this. a break and come oh, back. Sorry, sorry. With why do I care? All right, why do I care? Why do I care? Why do you care, Nick? Michael Strahan goes into space. How do we feel about it? Um, He does? He went. Yeah, he went to space. space. He became the what? first American news anchor to fly to space <sighs> following Saturday's flight. Was that the $3,000 flight? Yeah. <laughs> uh, did C CNN buy that for him? Jeff um, Bezos, I the Blue Origin. The 11-minute flight... Let's ticket holders travel over three times the speed of sound, float weightless for several minutes, and witness life change. It's an 11-minute flight. You're not floating for several minutes. Um, wait, he was up there several minutes? So sorry, I was No, it says it's an 11-minute flight, and then it says you float weightless for several minutes. No, you don't. What do you mean? 11 minutes isn't several. Yeah, oh, yeah, it is. I think several is four what? and more. Wait, if, if I'm saying it's going to be several hours, what what do you think? The, the taping is going to take several hours. What do you think several is going to be? I would say it's no, more than a couple. It depends on the chunk of time. If it's minutes, I think several minutes is 250 minutes. No, yes, what? That's how Andrew, if I say that our Uber is arriving in several minutes, how many minutes is that going to be? 50 to 60 minutes. 
No way does anyone think several minutes is 50 to 60 minutes. You would say about an hour then. Yeah. Dude. It depends on no. the chunk of time, Nikki. So several seconds would be thousands of seconds. Several minutes would be hundreds of minutes. Several hours would be of uh, seven or eight hours. No. No, no one agrees with you on this. I'm already speaking for every bestie. If I say the Uber's arriving in a couple minutes, that's two minutes. If I say several minutes, it's around four or five. If I, yeah, I said the like Uber driver, a few minutes is three. If I said three. the Uber driver was floating in air in a air shut in a shuttle for several minutes, I would think it was about seven oh minutes. I would God. guess several is seven. This is blowing my yes. mind. I mean, wh- wh- call someone. Ask them what you think my several phone is minutes recording. is. recording. <laughs> Oh, I'll call but my parents call right dad. now and but I'll get them use it in the, I'm going to call don't my parents. Use it in the Uber setting because Uber's only that, that doesn't work. I'm not I'm going to say they they floated in space uh, okay. for several minutes. Think, I'm going to ask what that is. How long do you is. think it was? Yes. Don't tell them 11 minutes. I, I'm not I'm not going to I'm not saying anything else. Talk about several this has been for rings. A few several rings. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> hey mom, you're on my podcast. Can I ask you a question? Yes, I'm with Poppy right now. Oh, uh, is Dad there too? No. Baby guy. Aww. Hi. Aww. Say hi, Nikki. Hi, Nikki. Aww. Hi, Poppy. Aww. I miss you and I love you. <laughs> Say, what's your question? Poppy. Poppy, are there monsters? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Where? Right there. Oh, my God. Where, oh, right there? Oh, no. Will you protect me from them? Several (laughs) monsters? She's shaking her head, yes. Okay, good. Thank you, Poppy. I have a quick question. Mom, if I told you that someone floated in space for several minutes, how many, approximately how many minutes would you think that is? For several minutes? Yeah. Three. Oh, good guess, Poppy. Look at the monsters. There are. I know. Poppy, I'm so scared. Okay, several minutes is three to four to five. Okay, thank you for that. I'm going to call Dad and get his response. Um, Poppy, I love you. Bye-bye, Poppy. Hey, bye, Nikki. This is just bye, showing Nikki. me your whole family okay. dumb. Bye, sweetie. You want to call your dumb family? Huh? I would, but I can't. I'll... Call my brother. Oh, my, you know my family's not dumb. Okay, call I'm going to... Um... He's not blood. <laughs> I'll call Matt. I'm calling my dad right now, but I'll call Matt too. I'll call Anya. I'll call. I'll I call trust everyone. your dad. Everyone no your one's phone. gonna. Come on, pick up, EJ. And my dad knows what's capable in space. He's very educated about space travel. Come on, pick up, Glaze Dog. Come on, babe. Come on, baby. Pick up. Come on, cutie. I'm gonna call Matt. Here's the thing. You got to say they were in a space shuttle floating, not just floating. Because I'm okay, picturing, you I'm present picturing a guy just... They won't be able to hear him. Floating in a space shuttle. Yeah. You want me to say that? You're in a space shuttle in space and they floated in space minutes. for several minutes. How long is that? I mean, this is a non-starter, dude. No one... You could pull everyone and 100% of people are going to say less than 10. Less than 10? Come it on. doesn't even make sense. I'm going to ask my very smart sister, too. If you said... She's not doing anything. If you said to me, hey, I got to drive several miles to get to you. Is that four or five fucking miles? Yes, dude. What? Hey. Hey, Lauren, you're on my podcast. I have a quick question. It's nothing personal. Okay, what's up? Hey, if I told you that someone went up in a space shuttle and that they floated in space for several minutes, how many minutes approximately do you think that would be? Several minutes? Yes. Um, I don't know, like at least six, six minutes. Okay. Several thank, minutes. Okay, thank you for your answer. Is anyone else with you that could answer this question? Any adults? Um, no, there's just a okay. baby. Okay, well, uh, I just spoke to Poppy, and she also said that it was several monsters uh, <laughs> that were at mom and dad's. <laughs> okay, okay, um, okay, wait, okay wait, thank wait, you, wait, Lauren. Wait, 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 we're going to... Wait, Andrew wants me to ask you something else. If someone said, hey, you got to drive... 
if, if someone said, drive several hey, miles, you got to drive several miles. minutes, several miles, how many miles do you think that would be? It's several miles to get to me. Several. I mean, it's got to be over five. That's. But under how many? Um, several. I would say ten and below. Five to ten. Do, Thank you. Yeah. That is what several means, and that is. Is that what you think it means? Of course, because it's what everyone thinks it means. Andrew thinks that if someone floats in space for several minutes, it should be like thousands of minutes. Se- what? Several yeah. means a lot. No, several is not. Then you would just say Andrew like, thinks several's a lot. A ton of like a lot. Yes, or you would say up to an like an hour like then you would just go to hours. Okay, thank you for your input, Lauren. We're going to keep going. Anytime. All right, bye. Man. All right. Um let's try my friend Cat. Can we Google several? Can you Google it? Noah? Yeah. I'll yeah. Go. Just Google Dude. it. Maybe then we could just figure this out. Because in my mind. Oh, here. Several. More than two, but not many is the definition. No. Hi, Anya. You're on my Man. podcast. Can I ask you a quick question? Of course. Are you with uh, any other adults right now? Yes. Okay. Um, independently, I want to ask, uh, will you pose this question to both you and the, are you with Matt? Yeah. Okay. If I told you that a space shuttle took off and was flo- they were in space and that the, the astronaut floated several minutes in space, how approximately how many minutes would several minutes be? Several minutes. Yeah. Approximately how many? Minutes is several. Oh, five, five to seven. Thank you. And Matt, would uh, would Matt agree with that or disagree? I always agree with Anya. <laughs> okay, but if if Anya weren't there, how many is several? Probably five to ten. Okay. Now, if I told you I was several miles away from you, how many miles would that be? Definitely over five and less than ten. Thank you. Final answer. Um, thanks, guys. I'll call you later. Um, all right, so I rest my case, Andrew. Are you are you done? I got it. Wait, Noah, definition. And can you okay, use the it definition in a of? <laughs> I will not use it in a sentence, but the definition is I want to a small you to number. Several years. A small number, more than two, but not many. <sighs> Why do I, in my mind, think a several years is a long? Jail sentence. Well, a several isn't a thing. It's just several. A several yeah. is, I don't know what that is. <laughs> Dude, I feel like I'm in a weird <laughs> matrix right now. I think this is um that, what's that thing uh, the called? Mandela, the Magellan Mandela. effect or the Mandela effect. Yeah, where you think the Berenstein yeah. Bears, you think it's, but it's burn, It's always been Bernstein. Several times. Or that you think Several um, times the, he the up. Mr. Peanut has a monocle, but he does not have a monocle. Is there a word? Really? Whoa. <laughs> yeah, Mr. I Peanut he, doesn't have I, a monocle. <laughs> Isn't that wild? He never has. <laughs> what? Wasn't that his whole thing? I know. Dude. Is he even a peanut? Nuts. Dude, he is a peanut, but he has never had a monocle. Look it up. It's wild. That is Mandela He was sentenced effect. to several years in jail. That- uh, yes. Mandela was. That makes it feel like 30, 30. Way more. Several. No, it's not. Several is not 30. Andrew. Andrew. I'm going to find this something. This is so funny. Then maybe there's a word. Mandela. All right. Let's go to. Uh, did we get to? Um, oh, yeah. We did. Why do I yeah. care? That's Michael Strahan. I mean, I care because you don't know what the definition of several is. <laughs> that was so over funny. several minutes. Final thought. <laughs> Let's go through quick top one, bottom one, because this is a quick one. We're going to do condiments. Let's start with bottom. Your least favorite condiment. All right. Who's going? Oh, are we doing? Least Andrew. favorite first. I'm going to go. Uh, this is tough. Uh, spicy mustard. Whoa. Oh, because oh, you're an asshole. No, but taste. But yes, that too. Taste. Okay, like a Dijon, even like a... I don't a, mind um, Dijon A's. If you add mayonnaise oh. to anything, your boy's digging in. But, oh, God, gross. that's a little foreshadowing. But, um... 
Yeah, that's my bottom. That's my mayonnaise? bottom one. Okay. That, mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. Anything with mayonnaise in it, I'm out. Don't like it. Don't want to smell it. Don't want to touch it. Don't want to hear about it. I, I would rather eat cum. I would rather eat a strange man's cum than mayonnaise. I'm not even joking you. It's this. It's gross. Well, that's not true because I don't want to get diseases, but mayonnaise is is foul. Um, Noah, least You'd favorite kind of You'd get Um... Does pesto count as a condiment? Yeah. You don't like pesto. <laughs> Not into I didn't pesto. know we could go into oh, what? sauces. Oh, you can go into any anything pesto that you can rub spread. on something. It's a spread. Yeah, pesto spread. What's the what about the pesto that you don't like? You don't like pine nuts. Oh, it's it's not the pine nuts. It's whatever the green stuff is. Mm. It's like too. You're not a fan of green uh, cilantro. I don't think it's cilantro. Um. So okay, pesto. It's like interesting. Too too herby. I, and and I like herby. herbs, but I, it's too herby. I thought you were going to say urban, and I was like, easy there. Um, <laughs> Andrew, number one condiment. going to blow Go. your mind. Wait, wait, wait. What's, uh, I don't. Oh, I'm sorry. Mayonnaise. Okay. No, it's my mayonnaise. bottom is spicy mustard. My top, spicy mayonnaise. <laughs> There's a spicy mayonnaise? Yeah, dude, at Japanese restaurants. Oh, oh, and the oh, white sauce at Benihana. Yeah, that's good. That's the shit. Okay. But it makes me shit before mm. I leave the fucking... Oh, that's a that fucks my stomach up. But God, it's good. Okay, what is that? What about you? Okay, I'm gonna go. Um, you know, we did salad dressings last, so I can't count salad dressings, but I would go with that carrot no. ginger salad dressing. I would dip anything fucking in that. But ketchup is my OG is number one. I love ketchup, and I love. Um, and I'm just gonna throw one in there for fun. Uh, sweet onion dressing at um at Subway as a condiment to put on your sandwich. It's so fucking good. It changes everything. N- Andrew, can I you co-sign, co-sign on that? I put several fucking pumps up of it on on every. I know. I was like, "That's too many." Subway. <laughs> <laughs> Noah, that number one condiment. Number one has to be a uh, barbecue sauce, and my favorite is Stubbs. Mesquite yeah, Stubbs flavor. is good. Oh, Stubbs yeah. is so good. I love good. like barbecue sauce because it even comes in manly containers. Like, <laughs> so it's like a boot. I'm a fucking, I hit my wife before I made this. <laughs> like, shut up. And I love it warmed up. It's a little tip. Oh. Mm. Warm it up. What's the weirdest thing you put your favorite condiment on that you've been known to put your favorite condiment on? Mac and cheese. Mac and cheese. Oh, that what sounds do you, delicious, Oh, put actually. barbecue on there. Yeah, smart. Smart. Would you Thank put you. it on a stub? Would you put stubs on a stub and lick it off mm. of a stub? Yes, if it's warmed up. Okay. <laughs> warmed up. That stub had been plotting something and rubbing its stubs together going, I have a plan. Hey, be thankful for your hands. Be (laughs) thankful for your stubs. Be thankful Um, for anything you have. I I had a friend in college named Dylan McCracken, and he would put mayonnaise. (laughs) I'm not lying. He'd put Mm. mayonnaise on Chef Boyardee in the can. He wouldn't even heat it up. He'd put the mayonnaise in the can, eat the can with the mayonnaise. He, He dropped out. College mm. failed out. I mean, I will put ketchup on any fucking thing, anything. But you know, the weirdest thing I eat with ketchup, like I, I use this sugar-free ketchup that is, um, I get at Whole Foods. I don't know the exact it's good, brand though. of it, yeah. but I just love it. It's Kensington so good. It's like made very good. Kensington. What did you say? It's very rich. Kensington. Ooh. <laughs> um, the, my favorite snack I eat, and this sometimes I just crave it. I haven't been lately. Seaweed snack, and and I've told this before, you take a seaweed snack, you take a little (laughs) piece of just cold fucking tofu, firm, you slice it, you make a little slice, you put it in the seaweed snack on one half of it, then you put a dollop of hummus or baba ganoush on top of the um, tofu, and then you fold over the seaweed (laughs) snack and you dip it in ketchup. That is my like favorite meal. I'm so weird. (laughs) Not weird. I love it. I love ketchup, but I don't like... I like a thicker ketchup. I don't like runny ketchup, of course. Yeah, I mean, it's... And that ketchup water, I mean, I'd rather drink trash water, like the water at the bottom of it the It is trash interesting, bag. though. You, ketchup water You is don't want to so bring foul. condiments yes. into the bed. Like, you wouldn't want to put ketchup on a penis. Uh, <laughs> no. No. But you'd want us to put something sweet on You'd put some stubs on, on, on like a sweet stub, onion. if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy. Oh, all right, guys. That's the show for today. Um, hope you got something out of it. I sure oh. did. Um, final Andrew, thought. The several thing is yeah. blowing my mind, dude. We did. That oh. was final thought. 
Yeah, we did top one, bottom one in this final thought. Oh, I, I said know. it. I, and I meant it. But uh, yeah, we'll be back this week. Uh, we're going to be in Los Angeles for this uh, this week, so we'll have some good LA stories. Um, we're going to be, be off on there. Wednesday. We'll be Besties off on Wednesday. Know, so we're going to beat off yeah. on Wednesday and be off. Um, just want to give you a heads up for that. We're taking the day off. Our schedules just do not align to make it work. But we will be here tomorrow and on Thursday, so don't worry about that. And don't be cut out there. And Jack the Ripper. Jack Antonoff. I think we, those Probably. are both repeats, but we're doing the best we can. <laughs>